morning on Thursday the 5th of August. I don't know how the week's going for you so far, but for our Olympians, I think it's been going pretty well. Our opening prayer. God of the living word, open our ears to your message. Open our eyes to see your wonders. Open our hearts to experience your love and open our minds to your wisdom today and every day. Amen. Our readings today are from Psalm 63 and Ezekiel chapter 43 verses 1 to 7. I've already mentioned our Olympians and I love listening to what our Olympic competitors say when they're on the high of an adrenaline rush. Take the boxer Ben Whitaker for example. When he won a bout which guaranteed him a semi-final place and therefore a medal of some colour, he stated his aims. One was fairly predictable. He wanted a gold medal. The other, somewhat less predictable to be mayor of Wolverhampton, presumably the area he comes from. He seems to be a very confident young man, and I half expected him to say he wanted to be king of the ring, but I suspect that that wasn't original enough for him. I was hoping he'd expand on why he wanted to be a mayor. Did he have political ambition? Or was it the ceremonial side that appealed to him? Fortunately, he did disappoint and explained that his aspirations in the role of mayor were to hand out gold to everyone in Wolverhampton. And why would he do this? So that they could have a big smile like he had. It wasn't clear at all where this gold was coming from. Maybe by men melting down the mayoral chain, or even from the gold medal he was hoping to win. Although it now isn't a factor of consideration because yesterday Ben Whitaker won a silver medal and presumably he wouldn't even be considered as mayor of Wolverhampton because he's not an Olympic champion. But as he was talking, the image that came to my mind, partially because he was a fighter, was that of kings and monarchs in the past, sharing out the spoils of victory in war with their people. Yet when we think of monarchs, not all are about flashy gestures which focus on themselves. Yes, a few days ago we heard about how Saul, the first king of Israel, was eventually seduced by power. But today we think about Oswald, a king in Celtic Britain, who had genuine concerns for his people, encouraged the spread of Christianity, and who died a martyr protecting the Christian faith. Then there's our own Queen Elizabeth II. We often see pictures of her leading the family to attend worship at Sandringham or Balmoral. But this isn't because she sees it as a duty, because of being head of the Church of England. Our Queen's Christian faith is important to her, and if you listen to her Christmas messages, for instance, it's clear how important Christianity is to her in her day-to-day -day life. But then we must remember that the only true king is God. In today's reading from Ezekiel, the prophet is shown the temple which is the place where God's throne is at that time here on earth. 
Christians now focus on the heavenly throne with Christ, the King, ruling over everything. But back to Ezekiel, because the linked message is God's disgust at the behaviour of earthly kings and how they ignore him. Of course, there are obvious exceptions, and in Psalm 63, our other reading for today, we hear King David acknowledging that he is only where he is because of God. Today I'm going to use two special prayers rather than one prayer and some prayer points. Our first prayer is for our Sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II, and all who are in authority under her. May they order all things wisely, with equality, in peace, and in accordance with your godly will, so that this is honouring to you and glorifies your name and is for the good of your church and all people. Amen. Our second prayer links to Oswald, for whom we give thanks for his life today. Lord God, who stirred the faith of King Oswald with your spirit, that he set up the sign of the cross in his kingdom and led his people to the light of Christ. Grant that we, being fired by the same spirit, may always bear our cross before the world and be faithful servants of the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Do please continue to take care and our blessing for today. To the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour, glory, and power, for ever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all today and evermore.